Hey y'all, welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. Another episode of Just In Time. A little cool out today. Uh, I have actually been down here digging up some green briar roots and uh, I've got to make some more medicine out of them. And uh, I've had this set of scriptures and this topic on my mind for a little while. Uh, in fact, a couple of weeks, and I was going to do it last week, and I just I went a different direction, had some other things. Y'all, I want to go back to the very beginning, and I want to talk to you about the foundation of faith. Oh, and let's just get right into it. I don't want to drag it out no longer than I have to. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. I want to let that soak in. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. When you look at our world, and you look at the scholars and the scientists and the theologians and everybody, there's a push for compromise. They want you to believe the earth is 4.5 billion years old, and a million or whatever it is. Now, I can't even remember. But I think it's 4.5 million years old. And they want you to believe that we evolved from a single cell organism into a animal and then into we just slowly become these intelligent human beings. And they want to everything because the whole goal of the enemy, which is the devil, and his spirit getting on people, is to try to undermine your basic faith. When you start compromising on Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, nothing else in the Bible holds weight. It don't matter. Because the very first scripture that was written, you're already starting to question. And they ingrain this at kids in school. Oh, that the Bible ain't true. If they can get you to not believe Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, then they've already got a wedge driven into your faith to where eventually you're not going to believe in water baptism in Jesus' name. You're not going to believe that God gave His only begotten Son that whosoever should believe it on Him should have everlasting life. If they can get you to compromise on Genesis chapter 1, they've got you already. People say, well, you know, maybe maybe it's true, and, and then there's the gap theory, and maybe between that there was this de-evolution, everything's wiped away because then God starts building the earth, and they, there's a lot of theory. There's a lot we don't know. There's a lot I don't understand. As God begins to describe through Genesis the creation of the world and everything that we know. The first thing that you've got to do is you've got to believe that God spoke and began to move and begin to touch and begin to work and things begin to come together. Is there some proof in science out there somewhere that there's this and there's that? It's quite possible. Because a tree grows from an acre. Or a small seed of some description. Pine tree from a seed out of a pine cone. Everything bearing seed giveth forth and reproduces. Why? Upon the authority of the word of God. Because God said this is how it's going to be. But you can look in science and I can watch an acorn fall to the ground. And I can watch it begin to sprout through the dirt in a flower pot. I can transplant that tree to the earth and I can watch it grow. In my life, I have planted a lot of trees in my yard, in the woods, in different places. A lot of them are still growing. There's pine trees in my yard I planted when I was a kid. They're huge trees now. 
So I have seen this work. Is that science? Yes. But why does it work? Because God said that that's the law. This is how things are going to reproduce. So how did God create the world? I, I don't really know exactly how he done it. But I do know in Genesis chapter 1 that God created the heavens and the earth. Even though things was without void and it was darkness upon the face of the deep. And there was a lot that was still going on to be formed. I believe that God created heaven and earth. Now the heavens is the sky as we can see. What God intended for us to understand and to look at. A lot of time has went by in our... But we have to understand that God is outside of time. It didn't take Him time to make anything. Everybody wants to start digging. Well, how many days was this? What is it? To God, that didn't matter. He said in six days, He created everything. God put man on there. He created Adam out of the dust of the ground. He pulled a rib from Adam and created the woman, Eve. But the thing that you've got to understand is when you study in science and when you start listening to other voices and they start making sense and you start questioning this book, you're beginning to fall away. You're beginning to become weak in faith. Your faith is beginning to become undermined. There's a lot I don't understand. There's a lot in this world when it talks about the firmament and how it looked and how that worked. And I have my own ideas about the firmament and what it was and how it worked and how things began to prosper and, and grow under it. I believe the firmament was this globe of water that was all the way around the world and we were in somewhat like of a bubble. And it kept everything at a constant temperature from top to the bottom. I think that that part of the time all the world was in one place. All the land was gathered together in one place. Because the Bible says the waters were gathered together. Until Noah's day when he broke that firmament in the flood. You read in Kings when he talks about Peleg lived in the time when the earth was parted. So there's bits and pieces throughout the Bible that leave you clues as to kind of what went on. Do I know that to all be a fact? No, but I tell you what I do know. I do know that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We did not come from nothing. We did not just magically appear out of nowhere and just start coming together by some accidental mishap. We didn't evolve from nothing. We came from something and we were created out of the image of God. You were created into his likeness. Not like Him, but in His likeness. We have to understand that I have to believe Genesis 1 and 1. For me to be able to open this book up and believe anything else in it. If I can't believe Genesis 1 and 1, how can I believe that He died on the cross and that took care of a lot of my sins? That that put everything I've done under the blood? Did that give me repentance? I can't understand Genesis 1 and 1. How can I believe that I can lay hands on sick and pray in Jesus' name and they can be healed? If I don't believe Genesis 1 and 1, nothing else in this Bible is going to work for me. Blindly, blindly I believe that God created the heavens and the earth. So much so that when I come out into this world in these woods and the outdoors and I begin to look at the trees that's growing around me and I watch them reach towards the heavens, I know that that didn't just happen by accident. Every plant is reaching upwards. They're reaching up towards the sky to let me know that there's something up there that they're going towards. Everybody says, oh yeah, well that's the sun. They, they... I don't believe so. Because right now the sun is over yonder. Sometimes the sun is under there. And they're still reaching that way.
there's a spirit that moves inside this world, that plants have powers to heal sick bodies. That everything that we see when you go to the Rocky Mountains and you look and see those mountains reach away up there, they didn't just get there by accident. When I watch late in the evening as the sun dips down below the horizon and I watch the colors start spreading across the skies and all kind of pinks and oranges and purples and they look majestic. I know that my God created that. And when it comes a rain shower in the summer and the sun peeks through out of a cloud and shines through and I see a rainbow that reminds me he'll never flood the earth again. I know that there is a God. When I watch animals and how they reproduce and how they're designed to withstand these frigid cold temperatures, I know a lot of people would like for you to think, oh, you need to go gather up all animals and get them inside. No, honey. God made them animals to where they can handle it. They're not weak-minded like some of you are. They can handle what God created them in a way to be outside. Now, once we start bringing like my dog in the house and he spends days inside all the time, then his body starts to change. And he gets adapted to that inside temperature to where if you throw him out into that cold, then all of a sudden he's not the same anymore. Because he's been disconnected from what God originally planned for him to be. But I see how God designed these animals to live. To thrive that they can make it as I walk through the woods I don't find just dead birds everywhere after this cold spell no they flying around finding seed to eat finding food for themselves and I can look at all of that and know that God is awesome there's a God out there that spoke everything into existence and I watch as scientists desperately try to undermine this and their whole basic of time frame is based on carbon dating that when you really study it has less than a 10 percent of accuracy in what they could actually test and knew a time frame on yet they all say well it, that you know it's still got to be true and they run with it anyway because they refuse to acknowledge that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Because somewhere there's inside of a man a spirit that starts to talk to him, that wants to tell him, you know what, there's really not a God out there. There's really not a higher power out there. You, you need to just worship yourself. And you need to just believe that man is greater than anything else. And the thing that blows my mind, is we start to slowly work towards idol worship. Because we don't worship God and the things that God created. Men slowly start to worship things that men created. Men begin to love things that man has created. And we start to put technology and things that man has designed greater than the things that God designed. And no, we were not meant to worship the animals that God created or the things that God created, but to worship the Creator. And the same thing happens as we begin to worship phones and football games and vehicles. And, you know, people put this high thing on class of men by what kind of vehicle you drive is your status. And People get so wrapped up in this kind of vehicle and that kind of, oh, you something if you drive one of these and they're worshiping the thing, but what they really want to worship is the man. And we're slowly working towards self-love, idol worship. The Bible talks about in those last days that men will be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. And you look around today and you can see that on every hand, in every aspect of life. People worship what they can do, what they have created, what they put their hands on. And they have no faith for what they can't see, what they can't understand. They've got to be able to put their hands on anything to believe. They want proof of everything. I don't have proof 
of Genesis 1 and 1. I have faith. My faith says that I read where God said he created the heavens and the earth. So I believe God created the heavens and the earth. I believe that everything I see and everything that I know and can imagine that God created it. Yeah, I can see where the tree grew from a seed. I can see where the pine needles that's on the ground fell out of these pine trees. I can understand a little bit about where it comes from, but why? Because God spoke it into existence. Because God created the order in which things will go. As you begin to read through the first, through the first book of the Bible, through Genesis and the creation, and you see how he created everything that it worked in order to, to reproduce. And for over 6,000 years that we know of, it has been thriving. Yeah, I know man has showed up and we have destroyed a lot. We've made a mess out of a lot, but I don't think we have the power to actually annihilate it and wipe it out. I don't think man has the power to absolutely destroy God's creation. That's why now you have people so wrapped up in climate change and oh, we've only got so much time to the planet till we can't live on it anymore. Only because of God's creation and His authority. When He says this is enough and this is as long as man's allowed here, then we'll be gone. Until that time, we're not going to self-destruct the world on our own power. We don't have that authority. Because in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It withstood a flood. It withstood the firmament breaking and hitting. It has withstood asteroids that we know of that have hit the earth that we've seen the evidence of. It withstood dinosaurs roaming the land and devouring things because we have found their bones. There's a lot that went on. There's a lot that scientists say happened that I'm not so sure about. We talk about an ice age and we talk about a lot of things. Is it possible? I don't know. If it happened, it happened under God's authority. It happened in the time frame that God allowed it to. So I don't grab onto men's words and just hold tight to them. I grab onto God's word and I hold tight to it. And I believe it. Why? Because he said that they shall be delivered from things of this evil's. And when I struggled with alcoholism, and I couldn't fight it, and I tried to break it on my own, and I couldn't, and God poured His Spirit into me, and I spoke with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance, and that spirit of alcohol was broken for me that I no longer had a desire for it. I no longer liked it. I no longer wanted it. I didn't want to smoke cigarettes no more. I knew then that this is real. There's power in this. God's word is true. I know there's a lot of people that they skeptics about everything. They want to break it down and they want to take certain scriptures and find something that fits what they like and just work on one or two scriptures. You got to take this whole book. And you got to eat it. Revelation says it sweet to their tongue. It's bitter in their belly. It's going to change you. It's going to shape you. It's going to mold you. But the main thing is if you're going to have any deliverance, if you're going to have a Savior, if you're going to believe Jesus is real, that He died and rose on a third day, if you're going to believe any of it, that there's a heaven created and a paradise for us in the afterlife, You've got to believe Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. It is the foundation of your whole faith. When you question it, you're questioning everything else. You're questioning everything God put into order. Know this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I love y'all today. I appreciate you watching just in time. I pray that God blesses each and every one of you, that he draws you closer to him, 
that every day you walk is a step closer in the right direction toward Him. Reach for Him. He said, Seek and you shall find. Ask and it shall be given. Knock and it shall be opened. The promises of this book is for you. There's life for you. I'm praying for all of you. I pray that God will touch you. Some of you are sick. Some of you are struggling with things. I'm praying for you. God bless all of you. Remember, if you'll do a little better today than you did yesterday, tomorrow will be a better day. Love y'all. God bless you. We'll see you next time.